Ladies and gentlemen, there has never been a better time to start using Digital Combat Simulator World, arguably the best aviation combat simulator available with both classic and modern warbirds. To start, it's worth noting that DCS is free 24-7. You get the region of Georgia and the Black Sea, an SU-25T, and the TF-51D with the free download. From there, you can purchase many high-quality add-ons, aircraft, scenery, and campaigns for the sim. This brings me to the main point. You can now try the entire DCS add-on catalog for 14 days per add-on. You might want to try the FA-18 and the Super Carrier module at the same time, or just the F-14 and the Nevada map. You can pair the catalog at your own pace. The counter also resets after 6 months. At that time, if you still haven't purchased the module, you are free to try it again for another 14 days. Once you have DCS installed, let's take a look at the settings first. Under System, this is what I have for graphic settings, using a 1080Ti, 10700K, and 32GB of RAM. Hopefully this benchmark will give you a quick view on the settings you could apply to your sim for a good balance between visual quality and performance. Next we're going to talk about the controls. I'm using a T16000M and Logitech rudder pedals. To start a new one, I'm going to select the T51, then go to Axis Assign. From there, you want to make sure everything is correct and nothing is dual mapped. If an axis is moving in the wrong direction, you can reverse it by clicking Axis Tune Invert. This is also where you can tweak the axis with curves and dead zones. Here's a checklist to go over when mapping the basic controls. Granted, each plane may have some additional buttons you might want to map, but here are the main ones. Ailerons, Elevator, Throttle, Rudder, Wheel Brakes, Spoilers, Flaps, Trim, Landing Gear, Gun or Trigger, Weapon Select, if applicable on the aircraft you're flying. Also make sure none of the camera views are mapped to your main flight controls. When looking horizontally, you want to only see your hardware. A lot of people use Stream Deck products to map out buttons like this in DCS. There are also some mobile and software based apps that simulate button pads off screen. At this time, I want to go over some useful key commands to know. I recommend taking a look at the general control options because there are a lot of them that might be useful to you. But for now, I've made a list of some of the useful ones for myself. P is active pause. Control Z and Control Shift speed up and slow down the simulation. Left or right Windows key plus the home key will auto start the aircraft. T is the auto throttle. V is takeoff trim flashlight. Slash radio, this is how you communicate with other aircraft, personnel, airports, and most importantly the ground crew. You can ask for repairs, load the aircraft with fuel, weapons, and other ground crew tasks. Once in this menu, the different stations and commands are done with the F keys. Right Alt J allows you to control other aircraft on the map. There's carrier commands. F9 is the ship view. F9 plus left alt will give you the landing signal officer view. Then you have nose wheel steering, launch bar, hook, and pilot salute. I have this one mapped to one of my joystick buttons. This is the salute the pilot gives to initiate the carrier launch. When flying this simulator, I recommend using Track IR or a similar product. I use FaceTrack No IR, which uses a webcam to track my facial movements. The software is just a few dollars. There are also mobile apps for this now, and if this is not an option, you can still use the mouse or joystick or hat switch to look around. Um, let's go over some of the key commands for the camera. Alt C is the mouse look on or off. Uh, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom. You'll need Alt C to do that. Uh, left shift J adds and removes camera shake. F1 is the cockpit view return. And then for the external, hitting many of these buttons more than once will cycle to the other aircraft or objects around the map. F2 is the exterior aircraft view. F3 is the flyby view.
F4 is the chase view. F5 is the nearest aircraft view. F6 is the active weapon view. F7, ground unit view. F8, target view. F9, ship view. F10, map view. F11, airport free camera. Control F12, free camera, which is then controlled by the WADX keys to move around. Next, take a look at gameplay settings, miscellaneous settings. These are mainly personal preference type settings. If you want to turn the menu music off, you can do that under sound. If you would like to use VR, just have the headset running and launch DCS. It should automatically start in the headset. In the system settings, there is a VR graphics profile you can run. Now onto the main menu. On the bottom are all the purchased modules you have, the gray ones you do not own yet. Clicking the color icons will take you to the instant action menu for the module. On the right are the main options to begin missions and free flight. Starting with instant action, this lets you choose the aircraft, scenario, and map, then loads you into the situation. For example, a head-to-head -head dogfight, aerial refueling, or a simple free flight. This is a good time to make sure all of our controls are working properly. Select the TF1D, the caucus map, and let's load in with a cold start. To start looking around, we can use Alt-C, or at this time you can turn on your head tracking. Hit left window home to begin the auto start procedure. And if this is not mapped, you can fix that now. Often it's defaulted to right wind plus home, but for some reason it doesn't work on my keyboard until I change it to left window home. So you're free to manually start the engine as well. Steering with the wheel brakes, we just want to taxi, take off, and land, make sure everything is working properly. You might find the TF-51D difficult at first, and that's because it handles like the real thing. DCS captures the level and detail and behaviors you may have never experienced before. These aircraft do not let you get away with doing things incorrectly. Being out of practice with TF-51D, I experienced a wing drop while landing. This ended up bending the right landing gear, and things like this can happen all the time in DCS. Bending props from hard braking to blowing engines, this simulator has an excellent damage model. Let's take a look through some of the options from the main menu. Create fast action, this is another way to customize your own start in more detail. Mission brings you to all the available missions for an aircraft or module. Campaign, these are story driven missions you can purchase, create your own, or download others. Multiplayer, this allows you to fly with real people around the world. This has a wide range of beginner and real world operations servers, I recommend the four YA training servers when starting out. They're a little more towards the bottom of the list. Just launch, pick an aircraft, and you're in. You can also play as other positions like door gunners when you get really good. You can join networks like DCS Simple Radio Standalone, and this adds human ATC to the multiplayer experience. Logbook, this has your hours, medals, and stats. Encyclopedia, a viewing tool for each aircraft and weapon, ship, and object in the sim. Training, these are verbal training missions to instruct you on flying each aircraft. Replay, when you quit a mission, you have the option to watch the track back. This is where the F key commands get really fun. Control Z and Control Shift will allow you to speed through the replay to view what you want. You can also save these tracks and watch them again later. Now we have the mission editor. This is basically the Sim City of War. Click create new, select the map country to start clean or you can load in a pre-made mission. You can change anything you want about the mission. This itself is an entire video and article but I think I can briefly show you enough to be dangerous. File, open, mission, 
and let's open uh, a takeoff and navigate mission. You can move around the map by right clicking and dragging across the map. On the left you can adjust the time and weather. You can add aircraft, helicopters, ships, defense, infantry. Basically you can start your own war and you can even add cars, buildings, objects using the static object button. And this menu is also in the top bar and each object menu can be assigned a hotkey. To demonstrate, I'm going to start a small tank war, select the ground unit icon, then armor. Let's place an APC BTR-90 tank uh, for one coalition. You can decide which direction the object will face by adjusting the heading button. Draw a small waypoint by left clicking. And to make this a fleet, just click the unit, the plus sign, and it will add more units with the same settings. You can arrange them in any formation you like. We'll also add a gunship on each side, so select the helicopter button, then we'll use a UH-A1, and we'll set it to start at 50 feet, going 40 knots on both waypoints, 0 and 1. Then we can add a payload, I'll give each one a door gunner, and this is also where you can add fuel and change liveries for all the aircraft. Now we'll do the same for the other side, we'll select the M1A2 Abrams and a UHA one. If you want to load in as the aircraft you place, select player under the skill menu, otherwise you can leave these as AI. We can now launch the mission. This can be done pretty quickly with the fly mission button on the left sidebar. This makes testing and editing nearly seamless and once loaded in we can hit F2 and the F8 key to move around and view the different units in battle. And this is why I call it the Sim City of War. This is a game just in itself if you don't want to fly. It's not all about combat though. You can do some pretty cool things with the editor. Here I made my own air show with a crowd, exhibits, and flyovers. I have it set to start as a Christian Eagle stunt plane by the ramp. You have to taxi by the Blue Angels all while getting a spectacular view of an Air Force transport flyover. But you can switch to any flyable aircraft in the show by using the mission editor. DCS also offers a pretty nice general aviation experience overall. If you think you know prop planes, give the Christian Eagle a try. This will really test your skill. You go exploring in Las Vegas, land in Dubai, carry cargo, or even go air racing. Through the mission editor and create fast action, you have many options to do what you want. To learn more about DCS and aircraft, make sure you check out the included training in the main menu. If you like to read guides, then check out Chuck's Guides. These are awesome books about different aircraft in the sim. For video demonstrations, I like watching Matt Wagner and the Grim Reapers. Summer is here for a little longer, and you now have the foundation of DCS. Remember, you can now try anything with this sim, a rare move that you normally don't see. If you plan to purchase modules, make sure you catch one of their regular sales. More often than not, upwards of 50% off. Thanks for checking out the video, everybody. I hope you learned something. Take care. Ah,